Hi everyone, my name is Swati and I'm going to be presenting our result on a faster algorithm for semi-definite programs with diagonal constraints. This is joint work with my advisor, Yintat Lee at the University of Washington. We start with the problem statement. Given an n by n cost matrix C, we want to maximize the trace of C times X, where our constraint is that the matrix X should be PSD and all its diagonal entries should be at most one. We want to solve this problem to epsilon accuracy as shown here. When C is the graph, La when C is a graph Laplacian matrix, this problem is the SDP relaxation of max cut as was given by Gomans and Williamson in 1995. And in that case, this epsilon accuracy guarantee is natural because max cut has the following opt. This problem has applications not just in max cut, but also in max norm regularization um, for rank minimization, uh, community detection, etc. The reason we study this problem is that it's one of the simplest non-trivial SDPs, yet uh, we do not know much about its com computational complexity. As can be seen from this table of previous results on this problem, the runtimes are not really natural. So ideally, we would want the runtime for this problem to be O tilde of M, where M is the number of non-zero entries in the cost matrix C, um, and tilde is used to hide polylogarithmic factors in the runtime. Um, most of these runtimes are super linear in N because the solution can be low rank, uh, sorry, high rank and dense. So we now give an overview of the current best and our results. The current best result for this problem is by Arora and Kali in 2007, uh, where they use mirror descent with the negative entropy mirror map. Their computational complexity to obtain epsilon accuracy for this problem is m over epsilon to the 4.5. We would like to remark that this paper by Arora and Kali solves a much more general problem, and this is just their result when applied to this specific problem. Our observation in order to speed up this um, result was that the update rule in this algorithm is computationally expensive. And so what we do is that instead of following, instead of performing this um, costly step uh, in each iteration, we um, we do we perform cheap steps, which are basically unbiased low variance estimators most of the times, and periodically offset the error accumulated over time using high accuracy steps, which are costlier. Uh, this idea results in an overall computational complexity of m over epsilon to the 3.5. A remark about the output format of, of x, we do not return the matrix x explicitly, otherwise we would not get this um, linear in m runtime. Instead, given a vector v, our algorithm is able to output x times v in this runtime. We now get an overview of the current best algorithm by Arora and Kali. Uh, because we build upon their, their algorithm. So uh, by using Lagrange multipliers, we can rewrite the problem as follows. Um, note that the diagonal constraints have been now promoted to the objective uh, as here. And in the constraint set, we now have this trace constraint. The algorithm by Arunan Kare uses these two steps. Um, the first step is gradient update. And because the function objective is quite simple, this is the gradient. And the second is the projection step, which requires a matrix exponential, matrix exponentiation and uh, normalization to satisfy this trace constraint. These two steps are performed over one over epsilon square iterations. And this number of iterations comes from the convergence guarantee of mirror descent. An important observation of Arora and Kali was that um, this algorithm does not require the full matrix X to be computed. Note that in the gradient step, you use only the diagonal entries of X, and even in the projection step, you, you require only the trace of X, which depends only on the diagonal entries. Using some additional proofs, you can show that you don't even need the exact diagonal entries of X, and the approximate diagonal entries actually suffice. Now, in order to compute these diagonal entries, you can write them, you can write the diagonal entries of x of y 
in this manner as a, as a norm squared of a matrix vector product. And so for all the n diagonal entries, the total cost is given by n times the matrix vector product. But because this is a matrix vector product here, you can um, speed up the computation of it by applying Johnson and Strauss lemma. And that reduces the cost of computing these approximate diagonal entries from n times matrix vector product to log n over epsilon square times matrix vector product. The next question is, how do you compute this quantity, the, this x of y by 2 times zeta? So in order to do that, we use, um, they use Taylor approximation. Um, and by, because you have some bounds on the eigenvalues of this dual variable y, you can show that the cost to compute this matrix vector product is 1 by epsilon times this. Um, and using Chebyshev polynomials, this can be sped up to 1 by square root epsilon. So to put it all together, Arura and Kale's algorithm has the runtime of m over epsilon to 4.5 because of the following reason. This 1 over epsilon square factor comes from the number of iterations of mirror descent. Log in over, sorry, log in over epsilon square comes from the Johnson Linden Strauss transform uh, applied at every step. And m over square root epsilon comes from the Chebyshev polynomial. We now show an outline of our algorithm. We also run mirror descent with some 1 plus minus epsilon approximation of the diagonal entries. But here's the difference. Most of the steps, we compute only an unbiased approximation of the difference between the current and the previous iterate, um, which means current and previous XIIs. Um, and periodically, every k steps, we compute this XII to high accuracy, again using the JL transform. That is the main idea. So our main technical contribution is to show how you can construct such an, a good estimator with good properties. Uh, and we believe that these, that such an estimator can be of independent interest because of the ubiquity of mirror descent with negative entropy in, in theoretical computer science and machine learning. So the reason we expect to speed up in doing this process, in, in doing this modification is the following. Suppose the step size is denoted by eta. The JL dimension um, is L, and the number of steps between two high accuracy computations is K. Uh, we, we call this sequence of steps, such a sequence of steps, an, an epoch. Um, so because eta is a step size, the difference between the current XII and the previous XII is O of eta. And by the JL guarantee, um, that means that the error in of the, est the error, in error in estimation of this quantity is given by eta over square root of L. You, you can see this because uh, remember, if you want one plus minus epsilon accuracy in JL, you need one by epsilon square dimensions. And so just replace one by epsilon square by L and, and you get this. Um, now, because there are k iterations in each epoch, the error of this estimation process that, that we accumulate throughout the epoch is given by square root k times eta by square root l. And the reason you have the square root k can be seen in two ways. Uh, one way is either you think of it as the variance of this um, error is eta squared by l. And so over k iterations, the total variance is k times that quantity. And so the accumulated error is the square root of that quantity, which is exactly this guy. Uh, another way to see it is simply by Chernoff bounds. So if you want this error to be epsilon, you have this equation. And this equation now lets you tune the parameters to choose the best value of the JL dimension. In particular, observe that if you have the step size, eta, then uh, the johnson lennon dimensions reduces by a factor of 4. And because you're having the step size, the number of iterations in your process has doubled. And so overall, this is a factor of two uh, reduction in the runtime. So because we want the runtime to be as low as possible, this means we can try to reduce the JL dimension as much as possible. And the lowest it can go is just one. So if you just set L to be one, that gives us that K is epsilon squared by eta squared. And so that's what we have here. 
So notice that we've now got rid of um, two of the symbols from the previous slide. We don't have K and L anymore. We, we just have everything in terms of eta and epsilon. Now recall again that the cost per low accuracy step is m over root epsilon because that's the cost of computing the Chebyshev polynomials. Uh, and the cost per high accuracy step, which involves JL and Chebyshev, is m over epsilon to the 2.5. Um, by the standard mirror descent proof, one can see that the number of steps is in, in the entire process is 1 over epsilon eta. And by dividing the epoch, by dividing the number of steps with the epoch length, you know how many times you do these high accuracy computations. So that, that, that comes out to be this eta by epsilon cubed. And so the total cost is upper bounded by the number of steps times the cost per low accuracy step plus the number of high accuracy steps times the cost per high accuracy step. If you balance this, uh, these two quantities, you can choose, you can optimize for eta and choose it to be um, epsilon square. And when you substitute it back here, you get that the result is m over epsilon to the 3.5. So this is just a proof sketch. Um, the, the complete details can be found in our paper. Um, and again, the main idea of the paper is that you can do this thing where you um, do cheap computations in each step. Uh, if you use good estimators, where by good, I mean uh, they are unbiased and have low variance. Uh, and periodically offset the error by doing high accuracy computations. And the main technical contribution of our paper is to show how to construct such, an esti such estimators and to prove properties of these estimators. So here we're just summarizing the two results. The current best algorithm uh, has epsilon to the minus two iterations from the mirror descent with m over epsilon to the 2.5 cost per iteration, which gives us their total cost. And in our algorithm, because we have we slow down the number of uh, we, we slow down the algorithm by having more outer loop iterations, but then every one of our epsilon square steps you compute these high accuracy things, and then all other times you do the low accuracy steps, uh, and so our overall cost is m over epsilon to the three point five. That's all I have to say. Thank you for your attention.